Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video of how I painted three daffodils. Springtime was late to come to my area, but we sure had the daffodils. There were so many in the garden, and they were so pretty. And I hear my dog barking at perhaps a deer coming to eat the flowers. <laughs> anyway, I've been picking the flowers and painting them and drawing them. And I brought a handful in for my students to draw as well. While they were drawing them, I was demonstrating how I would set up a composition. And then this painting ensued. I hope you'll like it and give it a thumbs up. Now let's paint. And so here are the daffodils. I put them into a vase and then I began to draw them. After drawing three different angles or points of view, I decided to include a sun in my background or a sphere. So I painted around the white area and then I began to paint blue for a sky. Here I'm painting around my drawing entirely and I'm using darker green garden colors for the bottom of the painting and the blues for the top. The sun I painted wet on wet keeping the center white and then putting in a little cadmium yellow around the outside. This is just the first layer for the background, but I'm using different shades of green, like sap green, hooker's green, and I'm also bringing in some purples and violets, and even a tiny bit of permanent rose. My thinking for using these purple colors was that daffodils are largely yellow colored and orange colored. Yellow is a good opposite complementary color for purple. And blue in the sky is a good complementary color for the orange. Now, once the background is blocked in, I begin on the flowers. There will be more layers added to the background. One of the daffodils I brought in from outside had a beautiful pink cup, pink almost melon colored, and I'm trying to convey that color. First, I paint the ruffly edge then the cylinder going down to the bottom and then I'm working on the next one which had more of an orange and yellow color, more traditional. I'm trying to keep those edges very ruffly because I think that's one of the pretty parts of the daffodil. There were some delicate tones of green in some of these plants as well. So I'm putting in a very pale sap green mixed with some cadmium yellow. I want to share that there's an interior that has depth and goes in, and that the ruffly edge is the part at the top that sticks out the most. The interiors then are darker and the outside cylinder part is lighter. At least in the flowers that I was trying to paint.
the last flower I want to have the brightest colors. It was a very brilliant orange with a yellow ruffle around the edges. I'm trying to make a nice orange that doesn't look too bright, but also doesn't look fake. So I've mixed together some permanent rose and some quin yellow, or gold, excuse me. And trying to create an orange that will look both bright but natural. Going in for a second glazing layer, I'm painting in the lines around the ruffles to show how folded they are. And I will be softening that later. I'm deepening the colors and deepening the insides of some of the cups. And I'm trying to maintain the ridgy lines on the cylinder part that attaches to the lower part of the daffodil. You see, I just painted in some lines and then went over it when it dried a bit with some yellow to pull the colors together but try to maintain some of those lines that show through. I'm going over the sun and bringing out the yellow around the edge just a little bit more strongly. I've also put in the faintest tint of permanent rose around the edge. And then I blend it all out with a damp brush. Next I turn to the leaves of the daffodil, which are narrow and strappy. My main emphasis for these leaves is to compositionally incorporate them and make for a lively and interesting background. So I'm going to change the colors so they aren't all the same color. And I'm going to make sure that I use overlap. And that will imply the depth of the leaves. The leaves that I'm painting a strong yellow will be gone over with a strong green, so they will become a yellow green. Some of my leaves are going to be blue green. Some of them will be quite dark and some quite light. And this is to vary the interest of the composition. And hopefully to make the leaves look natural. Each place where a leaf is overlapped by another leaf or by a flower, I darken it where the shadow of that leaf or flower might be overlapping it slightly. I think that also helps create some depth. After completing the leaves, I saw that the background in general was very pale, so I did some darkening for that as well. And with all my work done, I wasn't entirely happy with the background, so I squirted it with my spray bottle. I did some lifting. I tried to force some paint to drip a little bit and to blur and to blend. It was just too stiff, and the colors weren't moving correctly. 
here I'm lifting some color out of one of the stems so it won't blend into the background so much. I'm using my damp brush. I'm pulling it over the stem and then blotting it with a paper towel to remove paint. Now I'm tightening some of the spaces with darks between the stems and making them pop out a little bit more. And I think I'm starting to become more satisfied with my background. I'm putting in a nice mixture of Hooker's Green Dark and Indigo. And I'm doing some accenting, bringing in some dark colors very close to the light colors of the daffodil flowers to make them pop out a little too. Now I'm finding my background to be much more dynamic and working with a better flow with the flowers. I see a little yellow in the background, so I decide to suggest a very blurry daffodil flower in the background, and I liked how that looked. So up in the top right, I took some paint out to do another one. You could see me painting in with a damp brush and blotting it with my paper towel. And then I add a little color and I paint around the areas that I want to look like white petals. That's a, an example of negative painting, which is a term I'm sure you've all heard. Now with the background more to my satisfaction, I begin on the outer petals of the daffodil flowers. I am looking right at the flowers in front of me and I'm trying to paint them as they look. I start by using a mixture of some vermilion and some permanent rose. And then I'm bringing in a little bit of purple for shadows. These are not bright colors because these petals are white, but I do want to share the shading and the overlap of the petals as well as some of the ridges and lines that go through them. Up in the top where the sunshine might be striking the petal, I'm putting in some yellow. Now each petal is colored a little differently because they're all catching the light in different ways. So really look at your subject. It's going to tell you more than anything what colors it has and what shapes and forms and ridges and lines. And that's what I try to do. Look at my subject. With each line I put down, I then blend with a damp brush. <clears throat> Unless I wanted a hard line, which I really don't want in these particular flowers. Here I'm deepening the interior so it looks like it's going in for that cut part of the flower. And then I'm adding a little more color around the edges of the pink daffodil.
taking a small brush, I'm detailing <clears throat> the interior parts of the daffodil's flower. Even while I'm painting the flowers, I'm noticing some ways that the background could use a little bit more color, including accent color. So I'm stopping on the flowers temporarily to add those accent darks around the background. Remembering that watercolor fades as it dries, this does need to be done periodically if you want your colors to be brighter. It's funny how I pause with the brush in my hand, and what I'm doing is thinking, where else do I need to put a little bit of color? And then I jump right back in and start to paint some more. So that's what I'm doing when the uh, film is seeming still, and I'm just holding the brush. So I'm thinking, do you do that too? Time to tackle those outer petals again and all their shading and overlap. There's three top petals on each of these daffodil outer flowers and three that go underneath. For each of the three that are on top, I try to make them be a little lighter and not put as much color in. The ones that are underneath are the ones that get shaded the most, especially on the edges where they're overlapped. This particular flower needed more yellow around the outer petals, so I am adding that for sure. And yet I thought too much yellow might make it overwhelming with the other two paler daffodils. So I didn't go too bright for it. and lifting a little light on the outer curl of the petals by painting with a damp brush and then blotting with a paper towel. Where the petals curl inward toward the cup part, they get darker. On some of these flowers, there was a greenish cast. On others, it was just dark.
I'm getting toward the end of this flower painting, and what you're seeing me do now is go around the edges of the white petals with a damp brush to soften where the color joins the background. Flowers to me are such soft petaled things, and I don't want the edges to look sharp. I want them to look very delicate and almost translucent. So I'm softening these edges with a damp brush to try to pull off this softness of the flower petals. And once I'm satisfied with that, I decide where to sign it. And it's done. I hope you enjoyed watching the video, Three Daffodils. It was fun to paint, and I've learned a lot about daffodils this spring just by painting them and drawing them. Help me out and subscribe. If you ring the bell below, you won't miss any future videos. Thank you. There's other links below as well, products that I use to my Facebook art page, to products that I make and sell on some other pages, uh, to my blog. Check them out. Maybe you'll find some things that might be useful or interesting to you. I also thank you for your comments and for your likes. They're interesting and they really help a lot. I'll see you next painting.